And well, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the festival for giving me the opportunity to, to present today. I've uh, really enjoyed the talks this morning and uh, also the, the last one that some of you heard on PTSD. I thought it was very uh, powerful and uh, uh, really important area where there is clearly room for improvement. Uh, so as Sue uh, mentioned, I'm doing a PhD at the University of Stirling in the Nursing Midwifery and Allied Health Professions Research Unit, uh, much quicker to say a MAP Research Unit. Uh, you can see our logo there. Um, and yeah, today I will be presenting on um, a scale to screen for antenatal anxiety that I'm working on. Uh, this is basically a, a short questionnaire or rating scale uh, to identify women who are uh, experiencing clinical symptoms of anxiety during uh, the antenatal period during pregnancy. Uh, so something similar in a way to the Edinburgh postnatal depression scale, which uh, I think most of you are familiar with, but specifically for uh, antenatal anxiety. So these are the uh, main things I will be uh, talking about in the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, initially, I'll uh, discuss some general information on uh, perinatal mental health problems and uh, how common they are and the fact that uh, postnatal depression is not the only, um, the only mental health problem that women can experience during the perinatal period. Uh, I'll then uh, talk a bit about why it's, uh, it's really important to identify as early as possible women and experiencing um, mental health difficulties uh, during, during this time. Uh, and also I'll show you uh, quickly some figures on the, uh, the costs of neglecting perinatal mental health problems. Uh, I think this was briefly mentioned this morning by the uh, Minister for Mental Health. Um, and then I'll uh, uh, conclude with, um, uh, with some information more specifically on anxiety during pregnancy and uh, this new scale that uh, we are developing at the University of, of Stirling. So um, if we start by uh, defining what uh, perinatal mental health problems are, um, so the perinatal period, uh, as you know, goes from conception throughout pregnancy and up to one year after birth. And uh, perinatal mental health problems are those mental health difficulties that women can experience during this time. Uh, and they range from uh, mild symptoms of anxiety or depression uh, up to uh, more severe conditions such as postpartum psychosis. Uh, so what's become increasingly clear over the last 15, 20 years, uh, I would say, is that uh, perinatal mental health problems are relatively common, uh, affecting between 10 and 20% of, uh, of all women. So if we think that in Scotland there are about uh, 55 five, sixty thousand births a year. Um, we can estimate that approximately ten thousand women will experience some some form of uh, mental health difficulties during this period. So it's it's a very uh, considerable number. Um, and we also now know um, that uh, there are a number of studies showing that uh, anxiety disorders are at least as common as depression. Um, so there has been much focus on postnatal depression. I would say rightly so. It's a very serious and it can be a very debilitating condition. Uh, but again, uh, as I said, it's not the only problem that, can, that women can experience during this time. Um, so some researchers, but also some clinicians, have proposed to uh, shift the focus from postnatal depression to the, uh, the concept, the idea of uh, perinatal stress, which includes both anxiety and depression and throughout the perinatal period. Uh, so these are uh, some figures on uh, some of the uh, perinatal mental health problems that, uh, that women can, can experience. Uh, so as you can see, 12-13% of women experience depression um, with similar prevalence rates uh, during pregnancy and in the postpartum period. And anxiety uh, seems to be slightly more common during pregnancy than depression, with about 15% of women. Uh, this was in a, in a very large UK study. Um, and similar prevalence rates in the postnatal period, uh, it also depends on time of assessment, whether it's one month after birth or 10 months after birth. Uh, and then we also have uh, more severe conditions, as I was mentioned, such as postpartum psychosis, uh, which usually has its onset uh, a few days or weeks after giving birth, um, but this seems to affect 
uh, much uh, well less women so we are talking about uh, one to two women uh, in a thousand so one of the of the problems that has been identified is that although we now have this evidence of how common uh, these difficulties can be um, often anxiety disorders in particular uh, go under recognized and particular during pregnancy so uh, women experiencing anxiety symptoms during pregnancy um, go undetected and untreated they don't receive any form of support or treatment uh, there is a, a recent report from the center of mental health um, suggesting that only half of all cases of perinatal anxiety and depression are identified and even less receive any form of, of support or treatment. So again, there is, there is room for, for improvement here. Um, and there are a couple of uh, important reasons, I think, why, um, why it's crucial to identify as early as possible uh, women, women with poor mental health during, during this period. Uh, first of all, we know that there is a certain continuity, uh, stability of symptoms from pregnancy to the postpartum period. Uh, there are several studies showing that uh, about two-thirds of all women experiencing anxiety or depression in pregnancy will go on to develop similar symptoms in the postnatal period. And of course, one of the implications of this is that we can target a substantial proportion of women at risk of postnatal depression or anxiety in the, pre in the antenatal period. So if we manage to provide support uh, and putting interventions in place for women early, it's possible to prevent at least some of these women from, uh, from experiencing similar symptoms postnatally. Uh, we also know that, uh, and I think this is another, uh, as equally important reason as the first one, that uh, mental health problems in the perinatal period affect not only women's emotional well-being, uh, but also child development. This is again evidence that uh, it's, it's emerged over the last 10-15 years. Um, and these are some, I've included here, only some of the potential negative outcomes on children, which include behavioral problems, uh, poorer emotional regulation, uh, language delay, and they can last long term up to uh, adolescence with poorer mental health in adolescence. Now, it's not uh, completely clear yet why maternal mental health problems affect child development, but it seems that uh, one of the mechanisms is that during pregnancy, increased levels of cortisol, which is a stress hormone uh, in the womb, can impact on the uh, neurodevelopment of the, fet on the, of the fetus and on fetal growth and then it can lead to these potential negative outcomes. Uh, I think it's also important to point out that this doesn't mean that uh, all women experiencing uh, mental health problems during pregnancy or postnatally uh, will have children that will develop this problem, but there is an increased risk. And I think this is another very important reason for uh, trying and identifying, promoting the early detection of, of women struggling with uh, with poor mental health. And this is uh, highlighted very well in a recent report on, uh, uh, on the costs of uh, uh, neglecting perinatal mental health problems. So this is a, a report from the London School of Economics, which was published a couple of years ago, and um, it was the first of, uh, of its kind to estimate the costs, not only in terms of women's well-being, but also in terms of uh, the impact on children. And uh, the researchers came out with uh, an impressive, a striking figure of eight billion pounds a year as the total cost of uh, not providing support to women uh, experiencing perinatal mental health problems. Uh, and you can see on the uh, left hand side of the slide uh, that almost three quarters of this cost relate to the uh, adverse impact on children rather than, than women, than mothers. Um, and we also know that it would only cost, the, the researchers estimated that uh, with an extra 200 million pounds a year, uh, the uh, pathway of perinatal mental health care could be brought to the recommended guidance in uh, levels in national guidance. So with a relatively small investment, there could be significant savings for uh, public sector, uh, for, of course, the NHS. So I still think that the, the main argument is that it's important 
to promote the well-being of women and children. But this is another, I think, powerful argument that there is also a, an economic reason for supporting women during, during this time. Um, now, I've decided to, uh, with my PhD, focus specifically among the uh, perinatal mental health problems for, um, on anxiety in pregnant women uh, for a few different reasons. I mentioned before that uh, anxiety during pregnancy is relatively common, uh, with about 15% of women, which is approximately one, one in seven women, experience, uh, experiencing anxiety symptoms during pregnancy. We also know that uh, antenatal anxiety is associated with uh, postnatal depression. So women experiencing anxiety during pregnancy are three times more likely to develop postnatal depression. Um, so it, it's a strong predictor of postnatal depression, another argument for trying to prevent these, uh, these negative outcomes postnatally. Uh, we also know that anxiety in pregnancy can uh, increase the rates uh, and the risk of preterm birth and the low birth weight, uh, which we know are risk factors for negative health outcomes later in life uh, as well. And there are also those longer term negative uh, developmental outcomes for children that, that I was mentioning. So uh, a few different uh, reasons I would say there to uh, make this a priority to uh, try and identify uh, women experiencing clinical symptoms of anxiety during pregnancy. Um, just to say that um, I'm not talking here about the, uh, what I think are common uh, worries and anxiety of pregnancy, which uh, of course I don't have direct experience, but I think most women do have a, a certain degree of worries during pregnancy, completely common and understandable. Uh, this is more about clinical symptoms of anxiety that can really interfere with a, with a person, with a woman's quality of life. Um, and what I've, um, I'm, I'm doing with my PhD, uh, we do have the Edinburgh Postnatal Depression Scale, uh, which is a very well validated and widely used tool, uh, but there's not a similar tool for anxiety in pregnancy. So that's why I uh, decided with, with my supervisor that we, this was an area that we could work on. Um, so I've included here the, the main stages of the study. I, I won't go into, into much detail uh, because of time, but uh, basically in terms of developing this scale, uh, initially I did a, a review of papers of studies looking uh, at anxiety scales used in studies with pregnant women uh, to identify which questions had the, the strongest uh, psychometric properties, which questions were the most reliable indicators of anxiety during, uh, during the antenatal period. I also interviewed 12 women with uh, a diagnosis of anxiety during pregnancy. And based on these two uh, initial sources, I uh, formulated a list of questions that could be included in the scale for potential inclusion. And these questions were, were then uh, rated by experts, so health professionals working in the, in the area of perinatal mental health. Uh, and what they did basically was to uh, rate the questions that they considered to be the uh, most important uh, indicators of anxiety during pregnancy. Um, other anxiety scales um, for the general population have symptoms uh, such as, for example, difficulties sleeping or not being able to relax. But these are relatively common experiences in pregnancy, so we have really to think about questions that can discriminate uh, the, the common experience of uh, not managing to sleep well, for example, in the, uh, in the third trimester. Uh, versus what are the clinical symptoms of, of anxiety. Uh, now, based on the, uh, on the opinion of experts, uh, I developed an initial version of the scale with 30 questions, and this was piloted on uh, 62 women recruited from uh, antenatal clinics in Glasgow. And uh, I'm now working on reducing the number of questions to get to a final uh, version of the scale, which is uh, of 10 questions. Of course, it's, it's paramount that it has to be a short questionnaire that women can complete in a couple of minutes during busy antenatal clinics, of course. We cannot have 60 questions uh, to, to screen for anxiety. Um, and the final stage will be to test these, uh, this new scale, uh, which will be completed by 200 women. And 60 of these women will also have a brief uh, telephone interview with a clinic clinician from the perinatal mental health team uh, in Glasgow. 
and then by comparing the scores from the questionnaires with the diagnosis made by a clinician, uh, we'll be able to determine what is the screening accuracy of the scale, how, how actually good it is in identifying those women with the highest levels of, uh, uh, of anxiety. So hopefully in the next few months we, we should finish with this and uh, we'll then of course see whether the, uh, the scale is effective and is reliable in, uh, in screening for antenatal anxiety. So, so just to uh, sum it up and, and conclude, uh, we've seen that mental health problems can affect approximately one woman in six during the perinatal period. Uh, and we now uh, know there is evidence of the negative effects, not only on women, but also on children. Um, and we also know that if we manage to uh, provide support and uh, treatment to women who are experiencing, who are struggling with mental health difficulties, especially in pregnancy, uh, we are likely then to improve outcomes in the postnatal period, in the short and in the longer term. Uh, so I really see the perinatal period, but in particular uh, pregnancy, as a, a very good opportunity for preventing uh, negative outcomes for both mothers and children. Uh, if we can intervene early, uh, there is a really good opportunity of improving the mental and emotional well-being of, of women, but also to uh, promote and improve healthy, healthy uh, child development. And that's me. Thank you. very much. Thanks. We have our roving mic. If any, anyone has any questions? Andrea? No questions? I wondered what, what how, how big this tool you think might be. Well, we, yeah, day. yeah. I mean, we are hoping because we are working with um, maternity services in Glasgow and the perinatal mental health team in Glasgow, we are then hoping to implement this tool initially, initially in Greater Glasgow and Clyde because it's also where uh, some of you uh, may know where there are more um, services in terms of perinatal mental health. There is a mother maybe unit, uh, but there is also a community perinatal mental health team. So because of course after screening for anxiety, we have to think uh, about the referral pathways. Uh, but th there are several options um, that, at least initially in Glasgow, are available. In rural areas, of course, there is less provision of services, uh, but I think this is not a reason not to start uh, working on this. And then hopefully, uh, we were just talking before the presentation, I think uh, it's, it's becoming more and more um, clear that this is a very important topic. Physical health and mental health have to go together. And, uh, and hopefully over the next few years there, there will be more and more work and hopefully this scale can, can have a contribution to, uh, to improve uh, yeah, outcomes for women. Without too much work for midwives. Yeah, yeah, oh definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I had my prerogative, I have my question. Does anyone else have a question? Ah, right in the middle. I think you might have asked, answered it actually. Um, the 70% and 80% of lack of um, access to um, support in Northern Ireland and Wales, is that just geographical? Uh, yeah, Basically, that's. So I but I mean, I wouldn't have thought Northern Ireland was particularly yeah. the rural. So is it about this slide anywhere? Yeah. That's... Yeah, so the 40% in Scotland, that's what you were looking no, at? No, no, the 80 and the 70% have no access to specialist care, so it's Northern yeah, Ireland so, and Wales. Yeah, so this would be the um, specialist perinatal mental health <laughs> services that some NHS health boards have and some, uh, some don't. So it's the fact that they just don't exist? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's atrocious. It's a huge discrepancy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's not much, um, uh, as much of a question as a, as a comment, just to say I think this is a really positive contribution to antenatal care. 
I work in community and then uh, there's been a, a huge rise, I think, in the number of women um, that experience anxiety in, in the antenatal period. Um, and I think half the difficulty for me is getting them to recognize the fact that they're actually experiencing, you know, clinical symptoms of anxiety. So yeah. absolutely, I welcome this tool and, and look forward to it, hopefully, you know, being a, a part of antenatal care. Thanks. So sort of knowing there's a problem, I think years ago we didn't really think antenatal the antenatal period should be a nice, happy time. No problem. So it was only the postnatal period you thought there yeah, might be a problem. Yeah. So it's acknowledging that there are, you know, women are different, they have lives which are complicated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think just the way society is, it's, it's, yeah. it's stressful. It can be stressful. There is an expectation, as you were saying, that pregnancy has to be a happy time. Probably social networks don't help because people tend to just post the, the best things happening to them. So, of course, other people who may be struggling uh, with these kind of difficulties can then compare themselves and don't feel that great. But I think, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a combination of women uh, trying to open up during conversations. I think a scale can also help in just facilitating a conversation between a midwife and, and a woman. Uh, it's not only a number as a result, oh, this is 14, the score of the questionnaire. It's, it's about also just talking. Uh, yeah. And making that connection as Jenny was talking about yeah, yeah. with the midwife. Well, that's fabulous. I think, oh, one more last question. Then. Yeah, this time, this time. Our roving mic is a fast mover. <laughs> Hiya, thanks. Just to touch upon the last couple of points that you've just raised and from that last question there, mm -hmm. do you think it's a case that we're just getting better at identifying it or is it something that is becoming more frequent as time goes on because of societal pressures and things like that or is it just that it's, we're getting better at recognising yeah, it? It's, it's very hard to say, uh, to have, yeah. Um, but I, I think it's probably both in a way there is definitely more recognition and less stigma. It's, it's less of a taboo topic. Uh, so, uh, yeah, women may disclose more easily these kind of difficulties, but also the way society works, uh, it's, uh, yeah, uh, kind of lives with so many things to do and it, it can become quite easy. Pregnancy is already, of course, a, a big time of change. Uh, so sometimes worries are not around pregnancy itself, but can be about, will I be a good mother? So there are, of course, lots of things to think about. And some other anxieties are about, for example, just giving birth. There is something called tocophobia, which is just fear of childbirth, which in some women can, can be really severe. And of course, that can make the whole experience of pregnancy quite, uh, well, not particularly positive. So again, maybe with, with some more information and support around that, uh, in, in some uh, instances, there may not be need for individual psychotherapy or even CBT in a group. It may just be words like a bit of information from midwives or other health professionals, GPs, about uh, what childbirth really involves. And, a woman may maybe feel a bit more relaxed. Uh, but yeah, so it could be anxieties both ways. And uh, yeah, of course, I'm not sure whether, yeah, that's changed or, uh, but it's definitely good that we are talking about this. Uh, that's, that's definitely a positive. I was thinking that's a, a whole area for research in itself. That's quite, and I think, I think with yeah. um, issues within maternity services, such as not being able to do as much what they used to call parent craft or preparation for parenting means women don't necessarily have the ability to meet with other women. Yeah, yeah, so they're yeah. more likely to be isolated. <coughs> absolutely, absolutely. Which doesn't help anxiety at no. all, does it? So it's fabulous. Well, thank you very much. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea.